Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Engine Gremlin channel. I have a short video for you here today. Today, we are going to be unboxing our rear end from our super awesome sponsor, Quick Performance. Now, uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I haven't actually opened this yet. I just made sure that I could get it open so you guys didn't have to watch me do that on camera. Uh, let's see, let's see what we got here. So this is actually gonna be a couple of different boxes because there's gonna be the main housing, the drive shafts that go into the main housing, and then the rear differential, which is its third box. Uh, oh, looks like I'm gonna need one of these guys. Now to give you a little bit more about, or a little bit more information about our sponsor, uh, Quick Performance, they specialize in uh, pre-built custom rear ends. This is actually a custom rear end build. This is a Ford nine inch rear ending with an Eaton True Track Posi differential with a 3.5 ratio. Uh, and then it's got a 31 spline input shaft for a Ford uh, new style uh, brake mount. Boy, I gotta give them credit. They really, uh, they really package this thing in there. Oh boy. I may have to edit this to cut out, uh, or at least speed it up so that you guys don't have to watch a crap ton of me cutting this thing out of the plastic. These dolls have. All right, I've got a fresh new blade so I don't have to keep cutting with a spoon. Oh, much better. Oh, now we're cooking. Yeah. Oh, man, these barbs are awful. Yeah. 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 That's better. All right, here we go. All right. Check that baby out, all right. Let's get some of the goodness off here. Oh man, this thing looks good. Now, if you've been skipping arm day, pushing too many pencils, I recommend that you get a friend to help. All right, this guy sit down. Oh man. So look at that, this thing looks amazing. So as I mentioned before, this is a custom rear end build by Quick Performance. It's a Ford nine inch rear end uh, that has a Eaton True Track Posi uh, that I've got just over there. Um, the Eaton True Track Posi, one of the reasons we went over that with, as opposed to a traditional uh, limited slip diff is that a True Track Posi while it's a limited slip diff, does not rely on clutch plates, which means that its longevity before you have to service it is way longer. Uh, now we've got a couple of special items on this rear end that we've added in there and uh, Quick Performance was kind enough to add them in. So the first one being is that if you look closely, Aside from the fact that it is built extremely well and the black powder coating that they put on there looks fantastic, you'll notice that we've got a couple of things going on here. The first one being is that we have a fill and drain service port for 
differential fluid, which is great. The other thing that you'll probably notice is that we have a uh, jack lift and also a drain port for said fluid. So anytime you want to service this differential, we don't have to drop the whole dang rear end. We don't have to take the entire differential out. Uh, we simply get to open the ports and add and change fluid or use this jacks, uh, uh, this jack pad here if we want to lift the rear end up of the car without having to worry about damaging the rear end. So the other thing that you will probably notice is this bit here. Now this is actually pieces from our Detroit Speed Quadralink rear suspension. So uh, one of the things that uh, Quick Performance insisted on is that we send them these brackets from our Quadralink rear suspension so that they could weld them on to the rear end housing so that it was done right. We didn't, that there's no warpage on the rear end. Uh, something that you know that is gonna be correct. Because if you're doing this at home, it can be a lot. You know, not that you can't do it yourself, but you do need to make sure that you go about it very diligently and carefully and that you have it jigged up appropriately. Um, but whoever you go with, in this case, I recommend Quick Performance that send them the brackets that you want onto your rear end and have the supplier weld it up for you because you know it's going to be done right and you're not going to have any fit up issues. You're not going to have any bad welds. I mean, looking at the welds that they have on here, I mean, these things are stacked dimes. They are great looking. So again, so Quadralink rear suspension bracketry on there. That's going to make installation onto the Mustang so much easier. We're going to get to that as soon as we are done installing our street or track uh, front suspension and after we've done servicing the floor pans. Now, the reason we're going to wait to install this uh, until the floor pans are done is because the Quadralink rear suspension requires some welding into the frame and pans of the vehicle. And we want to make sure that our pans are in good condition before we do that. Because if we need to do any service past that rear divider, that's something we're going to want to take care of first. Now, mentioning that, we are going to be showing you in a later video, not in this one, but in the later one, exactly how to assemble your rear end and how to install it onto your vehicle. So be sure you keep a lookout for that. Uh, other than that, as I mentioned before, look here. That is the big Ford new style brake bracket. So that's gonna accommodate basically any modern brake that you have. So if you're converting to disc brakes, that's gonna be fantastic to use. Uh, that about covers it for the rear main housing. As you can see, it's been tight, you know, it's been gusseted here with the housing for the differential into the main tubes. That's gonna make it really, really strong. This is a lot stronger than just your standard rear end housing. Uh, and on top of that, it's a Ford nine inch, which are damn near indestructible. I mean, they're legendarily tough. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna to get to the next box. I'm gonna carefully put this guy over to the side and back in its box. <laughs> Now, one of the things that I did leave out, because you may have missed it on camera, I quickly grabbed it and put it aside. This is all of the hardware that you're going to need to assemble your rear end. Uh, and again, we're gonna cover that in a later video. So I'm gonna set that to the side. Pull this guy up here. Again, I have pre-cut the tape, so you don't have to watch me do that. And these, cars. Here I am filming at night thinking I was perfectly safe from the noise of cars. Foolish me. These are our drive shafts that go in the housing. So, these are two and a quarter inch diameter shafts. They're a 31 spline design. Um, 31 spline design is gonna be plenty strong for the amount of horsepower and torque that we're putting to this rear end. 
Um, if you're going with extraordinarily high rear end, or sorry, extraordinarily high horsepower builds, you're gonna wanna increase the spline count so that the load distribution is better and you don't risk damaging your rear end. On top of that, you're probably gonna wanna go with a bigger shaft diameter and some of the other items that you can implement onto a rear end. If that's something you're interested in, you'll, you'll wanna go and take a look at Quick Performance's website as well as give them a call and they'll talk you through some of those horsepower adder uh, protections that you could add to your rear end. But in our case, uh, this is a huge upgrade as it is. We're never gonna exceed the capacity of this rear end as is with our little straight six. Um, so as you can see here, we have the five bolt pattern as opposed to the four bolt pattern that came on the Ford Mustang. Now this is gonna give us the ability to one, distribute the load amongst the bolts in there. It's also gonna let us use a modern rim and wheel, which is something that we wanna do because we're thinking about going to an 18 inch rim, uh, maybe a 275 wide tire. We really wanna get those bigger tires, wider tires, so we get better traction, we get a better ride, we get better handling, all of the above. And this bolt pattern, this standard bolt pattern is what lets us do that. Uh, let's see, lastly, we have the bearings on the end of these. And then we have the uh, seal caps that will go onto the vehicle as well. So we'll get back to those again in the, in the video where we show you how to assemble this and then install it onto your vehicle. Lastly, in that box, we have the adapters for the uh, big Ford new style uh, brake brackets. Um, these will act as spacers if you need them. Again, anytime that you're gonna build a rear end, make sure that you specify with the supplier what kind of brake system that you're gonna be using as well as the sizing and spacing so that when they go to build it, if you don't already have the hardware already, they know how to space it appropriately. So fortunately, we had already coordinated with Quick Performance on what kind of brakes we were gonna be using. We'll be covering that in a later episode. So surprise, surprise. Uh, but yeah, everything here so far is just awesome. And now we are going to get to the heart of this with the differential. So I'm gonna put these back in their box as well. This guy, despite being so small, is easily the heaviest part of this whole thing. And it needs to be because it is the part that takes all the abuse. This is our Eaton uh, differential, the True Track Posi. So this is a worm, almost like a worm gear style drive uh, as opposed to a clutch style. It's not tr a true worm gear drive. I forget the exact name, but you get the idea. So it's pretty ingenious how they actually sent this to us. I mean, they. They put it in this Menards bucket and then they had it uh, covered and wrapped accordingly so that it didn't get damaged. But this Menards bu bucket, A, gives it a really nice protective shell. Uh, and then when you add in the padding around it, it makes sure that it makes sure that, that powder coating can't get scratched and it's gonna stay protected. The downside of putting it in this Menards bucket is that getting it out looks like it's going to be a bear. Because this thing is bulging this Menards bucket. In fact, it's even cracked in a couple of places just from it being so wide. Now, it hasn't protruded through or anything, so it's still protected, but uh, I mean, we're pushing the limits here of what what this poor Menards bucket is can do. Now, the real question is, is it wedged in there or can I pull it out freely? And I'm really hoping that it's not wedged in there because this might be embarrassing to try and pull out because this thing is heavy to begin with. Hmm, all right. All right, so it wiggles a little bit. You know what, I think I'm gonna have to do this on its side, or there's no way I'm gonna lift that up. From this height, and it's heavy, it is. Okay, yeah, it comes right on out. I'm gonna try and be careful because obviously I don't want to damage the teeth on the differential. So I'm actually gonna grab something soft for it to lie on here real quick. Thank you. 
So I am going to use some of the spare foam padding that was used on the housing because I'm going to make sure that the housing is well protected in its box. But for the moment, again, don't skip arm day for this guy. Holy crap, that is a heavy booger. All right, woo! All right. Be careful not to scratch the powder coating. So all right, so as you can see, we already have the drive shaft connection right here. It's again powder coated that same uh, black color as the housing so it matches and it matches with the rest of the vehicle uh, styling design that we're going for. Uh, and then you can also see from all this gusseting that it's been strongly reinforced. Again, it is a Ford 9 inch which only makes it even stronger. Again, these things are legendarily indestructible. And now, again being very careful because you don't want to drop it. Don't want to damage your differential. So, Eaton True Track Rear Posse. Now, the actual drive mechanism for the shaft is encased inside of here, so you can't really see it. But what I am going to try and do for you here now is see if I can't. There we go. Yeah. So, there we go. Now, as I mentioned before, this is an Eaton True Track Rear Posse. The gearing size is a 3.5. Now, the original spec uh, for something of like a motor this size, you're probably going to be looking at something closer to like a between a 2.75 to 3.25. However, due to the horsepower and torque upgrades that we're going to see on this motor, as well as wanting to see a little bit of some faster speeds, uh, and you know just kind of the general overall upgrades of the car in general we felt more than comfortable jumping up to a 3.5 uh so any more than that i don't know that the torque and horsepower on this motor is going to be sufficient enough to really make use of it and again we want that low end torque for starting and stopping and accelerating so that's going to be really great so we're really happy with the gearing ratio that we've got here so far uh I mean, again, everything on here just looks so good. So I actually just, I cannot wait to put this thing together and show you guys how to install it. That's probably gonna be about a month from now. This video has been long overdue. We've actually had these parts for about a month. We've just been so busy between some personal stuff and then trying to build the motor and service a bunch of other things on this car that we just have not had time to open these boxes and really take these guys in and take a look at it but i mean everything on here is built rock solid from what i can tell the quality is excellent it looks great so this is going to be a great addition to the mustang um, again a huge thank you to our sponsor quick performance be sure to check them out on their website give them a call if you're thinking about upgrading your rear end especially if you're uh increasing your horsepower from stock um they've been absolutely wonderful to work with um, our, their website is going to be in the link in the description down below. And again, we are going to be returning with another video showing you how to assemble and then install your rear end. So until next time, I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching.